of a keyboard enthusiast. I've owned Happy Hacking boards and some even more expensive boards such as the Duck Viper. However, today we're going to be having a look at the Magic 468, a keyboard that the mechanical community strongly recommends, and this keyboard can be bought for under $30. I just need to make it clear that I didn't actually sell my Duck Viper for a Magic 468. I broke my Mac and I needed to fix it, so that's why I sold my Duck Viper. It wasn't for a Magic 468. As soon as I got this thing out of the box, I noticed how small it was. I'm a complete sucker for minimalistic keyboards, and this thing is genuinely one of the most tiny keyboards I've ever encountered. However, a difference between this and some of my other micro keyboards is that due to its creative use of function keys, this keyboard loses little to no functions over traditional keyboards. My personal model has backlighting, cherry black switches so there's no scratching that may be found on kale switches, and white keycaps. My variant of this keyboard costs about $70, however this can greatly vary due to how configurable this keyboard is. The price can go as low as $25, making this a great option for a beginner keyboard or just even a budget mechanical keyboard. Now, when I first ordered this keyboard, they actually sent the non-backlit model with Otemu brown switches, so I will be including both results later on when it comes to typing tests. Right away, there are many things that I love about this keyboard. The first being that it's just so simple. This keyboard is smaller than any 10 keyless on the market and fits in with my desk well. Build quality is great, the backplate is metal, and the cable is removable, which is a big plus for me. In fact, it's even rooted through the back of the keyboard, which is plastic. However, it's reinforced from the metal backplate, so it's sturdy. The included cable is not coiled or braided and is fairly short. However, because it's removable, it can also be replaced, so a custom cable can be installed. The keyboard is in the ANSI or US format, so just be careful when getting custom keycaps. Also on the back of the keyboard is three dip switches, which are actually pretty simple. The first switch allows you to swap the caps lock and left control keys, the second swaps the function of windows key, and the third locks the windows key so it can't be accidentally pressed and exit you from a game when you're playing. The Cherry Amex black key switches need little explaining, they require 65 grams of force to actuate so they are heavier than Amex reds, they are linear and have no scratching sound. They have an actuation point of 2mm and a total travel distance of 4mm. In terms of keycaps, the included set aren't great, they have this wide alien -y font that I really don't like, however this is to let more light through and is only on the backlit variant as my non-backlit model has a much more simple, less gamery font. The keycaps are most likely laser etched which I again don't like, and when I'm using this as my daily driver I will definitely be putting my own set of custom keycaps on that I got from Tehai. Moving on to keyboard lighting, it's fairly simple and luckily this actually matches my desk theme of white, teal and orange. There's no RGB lighting, however the keyboard lighting is bright enough to be visible at all times, including in bright situations. There's not many fancy modes here, just breathing which can be accessed by pressing the function key in the left key and can be adjusted by pressing the function key in the right key. I'm glad that the keyboard lighting is so minimal as it really does stick with the whole theme of this keyboard. Due to the nature of how the lighting is on the switch, some bleed is to be expected on the back plate, and there is none of that Roma G style lighting here. Speaking of function keys, this is perhaps one of the most function cram keyboards I've seen in a while, but this is to avoid losing functions because of the small size. There's a full list of commands on the screen now, but in short, there can be different polling speeds, media keys, volume keys, windows locking, and many, many more. Now we've reached the point of the video where we're going to be testing these keyboards. I will include results from both the brown and black switches and we're going to be doing both with and without o-rings.
My favourite are the black switches as I do like a linear switch, but the quality of the Otomo Browns were notable. They are pleasant to type on and I've had absolutely no problems with scratching sounds and for that reason I have to recommend them over Kale switches. Overall, I really like this keyboard. I've used MX Blacks in all of my most expensive keyboards except for my Happy Hacking board and as soon as I put on some custom keycaps and o-rings, I think this thing could well be my daily driver. Thank you for watching, remember to like the video, if you want to see more content like this then please subscribe, there's one thing left to say and that is goodbye.